We do have the most recent information as of yesterday. Uh, Gravenhurst does have uh, six COVID-19 confirmed cases. Of those six, uh, five of them are travel related. Uh, one was acquired in the community. Don't know the details around that one. We certainly are aware that there is a great concern about people returning from vacation and from the south, snowbirds and so on. So we have a, a large population that do return to Gravenhurst every year after having been away for the winter. Uh, the community acquired one is question, we don't know how that would have happened. I, I suspect, um, as typical from the Simcoe Muskoka Health Unit, that they'll be following up and, and inquiring as to where that may have been a, a, a obtained. Uh, but at this point in time, we do have uh, six identified and uh, being uh, taken care of by uh, the, the health unit, uh, the hospitals if need be, or self-isolation. Self um, so it is a concern about the possibility of acquiring it by the community and I know the health units across Canada are all concerned about that still being an issue. And so it does go back to the point that everyone is talking about which is maintaining that two meter, six feet distance between each other. And those, you know, I'm pretty pleased with our community, I'm not hearing a whole lot of people that are not um, adhering to that requirement. Uh, but there are some still, and it is absolutely critical. And from what I understand, the next two weeks in particular are going to be critical that people adhere to that two meters. You know, washing hands continues to be the issue um, and trying to stay home as much as possible. Uh, sure, of course, people need to get groceries, they need to get medications. But truly, it is a time when we all need to be thinking about the importance of staying at home. So those are critical pieces as well. And so there, there is concern and, and, and anxiety by the people in the community. But there's also some good news and some silver lining about people helping each other. And the one I would mention, I've talked about it a little bit before, is about a group called Masketeers, uh, which is a group of citizens who are sewing, cutting, delivering homemade masks, uh, which they've done to a couple of the seniors' residences and try to provide them to whoever who would like them. And also, I guess the other thing to point out is regarding GAP, Grave Nurse Against Poverty. Uh, it's been such a challenge for volunteers to be able to try to prepare meals, be able to serve meals, uh, given all of the requirements of healthcare. Last few weeks, it's been basically those people in need picking up uh, meals and vegetables in, and you name it, in the parking lot at Trinity United Church. However, tomorrow, Thursday, April the 9th, will be the last day that they actually will pick them up at the church parking lot. From that point in time on, GAP is moving towards a delivery service um, with regard to giving to all of those in need, uh, delivering it to their home, uh, along with the uh, gro grocery cards that the Rotary Club is helping to fund so that that will supplement uh, any food needs that the, those particular groups will have. The um, Red Cross, Cross have frozen uh, meals and that's what they're going to use as the main source of delivery. That's going to be the main meal that they're going to source, but also the grocery cards will help out. So those are a couple of pretty important things in our community that are happening right now. And with every day this, this COVID-19 changes to some degree or other, what, something we didn't know the day before or how it's moved in a different direction. And, and you know, as we've said previously on numerous occasions, there's no roadmap for this. And we're trying to do the best we can as we move each day. So those are probably a couple of good updates about what's happening in town uh, with regard to staff. Uh, again, we, we are still running a number of programs that continue to building inspections are still happening to a certain degree um, as, as long as they follow the requirements of the province. Uh, we still have a big part of what we're doing right now is enforcement because with all of the, the uh, uh, bylaws and enclosures and requirements, uh, our bylaw department and most recently the fire ban, um, it's, that's put a lot of onus on our bylaw department as well. And taxes, people are calling and asking about taxes and so, so there are staff still working and we're assessing that whole staffing piece as we move through each day literally as to what we do as the next step. And there'll be more information coming out in the next week or two.